This is one of the craziest challenges I've ever set myself. I'm going to be attempting to run through my standard challenge run format, following along with the career mode at set difficulties, except this time there will be no limitations. Instead, it's all about grabbing as many achievements as humanly possible within a run. Logistically, I've never attempted anything like it. With 1,328 total achievements in the game and so many moving parts when it comes to tracking and routing, this is no mean feat, although I must admit I have received a little help. A huge thank you to Hannah's Lenners for not only conceptualising this challenge in the first place, but also assisting in the routing and optimization with one of the most thorough spreadsheets I've had the pleasure of reading through, and I'm a bloody Excel gremlin by trade. Of course, I've got to get this out of the way quickly, but obviously the answer to the question posed in the title is no. We won't be going after all 1,328 as much as I'd like to, as some achievements pertain to gameplay that simply doesn't exist within the parameters of a standard career mode challenge run. Not least hitting Infamy 100 and earning all DSOD completions, but also things like multiplayer achievements or holdouts will be unavailable. Of course, the question then becomes how many achievements can you unlock over the course of a single run, which is a much more fun one to answer, as we're about to find out. I'm writing this prior to setting off on the challenge, and I'm currently aiming for somewhere in the region of unlocking 50% of the entire game's achievements in a single run, although I'll be happy with anywhere in the region of 600 across just under 60 heists, averaging about 10 per heist. Anyway, if this sounds like fun, follow along at home with the mod I've linked down in the description, allowing you to experience unlocking achievements all over again without actually damaging your game progress. Formulate your own strategies and see if you can't outperform my gameplay, because let me tell you, this playthrough is going to be monumental. But first, quality personal grooming is the real achievement us heisters should be striving for, and I'm overjoyed to once again get the opportunity to extol the virtues of Manscaped and the wonderful Performance Package 5 Ultra. The new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra really is the pick of the bunch. This razor is perfectly equipped for any challenge down there, with an interchangeable precision ceramic head and foil blade to round off the job. These blades are skin safe, which is the kind of peace of mind you always need before diving in for a close shave, and with a brighter LED and dual temperature feature, getting the perfect finish in comfort has never been easier. To elevate the experience even further, the Crop Soother is included in this set for that aftershave luxury alongside the Crop Preserver, a specially formulated deodorant to stay fresher for even longer. Part of your facial grooming routine is also taken care of by the Weed Whacker 2.0, a skin-safe ear and nose hair trimmer to make sure you're looking outwardly sharp as well. If this sounds like something you need, head on over to manscaped.com from my link in the description and check out the full range. When you use my promo code NOLI with 1K, you'll get 20% off your purchase, free international shipping and 2 free gifts. Loading right into a fresh Payday 2 save file, I've reset poor Yeowonk's achievements who never seems to know if he's coming or going. I can be nice and brief with this rule set on this one as at least there's no direct weapon, playstyle or perk deck limitations. We're just going to be running through career mode, as usual, with the same difficulty stipulations as ever. Mayhem from level 0 to 79 and Deathwish from 80 onwards. I did consider pushing that up to death sentence on this one for the extra difficulty achievements I'd earn, but thought the difficulty spike might just be too jarring, especially to have a chance at tackling some of the more interesting achievements later on. Mods will be completely out of the question outside of my usual HUD mod, and the one that enables me to re-earn achievements in-game. Cray-Eye, though, will be allowed just as they were on the speedrun. They're actually going to be crucial in assisting in many of the toughest challenges. As ever, we can only play the current career mode stipulated heist, so no grinding, although restarting a heist to go after a specific achievement is absolutely fair game. Once I'm past a day in the heist though, there's no going back. If an achievement is missed, it's missed for good, and will just be knocked off my potential tally. And that's it, those are the rules in full. Let's dive into the gameplay, starting with the ever so tantalising menu management achievements. Yeah, whilst this run will have me gunning after some pretty tricky in-heist challenges, it will also feature hours of inventory work as I set up my builds perfectly and unlock achievements that are tied to menu interactions. Before we even set foot on a heist and earned our first dollar, we can unlock Like an Angry Bear for equipping the Mark Mask, Merry Christmas, completely out of season for grabbing the Santa Mask, and finally heat around the corner with the Hockey Heat, all without spending a penny. That's sadly all we can do with no funds in the bank, meaning we head straight into our first heist, if you can even call it that. You see, for standardisation and simplicity here, if others want to try this challenge out, I'm going to make the call that you have to follow the required heist directly in this run, meaning we start with the loud tutorial instead of being allowed to fish for heists that would otherwise be unplayable along the storyline. 
The latter tutorial heist is a little limiting in terms of the achievements it offers, but it isn't exactly barren, seeing as early on Payday just loves to throw you little spikes of dopamine for doing just about anything. See, just masking up earns you no one cared who I was, and then accidentally pressing spacebar will unlock I want to get away for jumping. Positioning myself just right in the nightclub doorway means I can also unlock bunny hopping, fitting 100 jumps in less than 30 seconds, which really entails vibrating here until the alert pops up. Not much else to get done on this one though, I can just sprint through the initial day and do exactly the same on the second, to secure no turning back for completing my first job, as well as you gotta start somewhere for dinging reputation level 5. Back in the menus, we have to complete a few tasks to proceed past getting ready, also securing a few simple achievements in the process. Equipping any armor unlocks How Do You Like Me Now, we can mod the Chimano with a suppressor for future stealth heist and lock Arm to the Teeth for customizing a weapon, and by equipping the 350k knuckles we can pick up with an iron fist. In truth, I wasn't sure which perk deck I wanted to spec into early in this run, as only Maniac is tied to an achievement and that's multiplayer locked, so we really do have the pick of the bunch. I went for Hacker early on due to its hybrid utility and usefulness in a high kill per minute build, but honestly, I could have gone with just about anything, bearing in mind we will be taking Cray Eye with us on almost all heists. But what is pivotal is how I spend my remaining cash and continental coins, purchasing the Bargain Predator shotgun specifically for my crewmates to wield, and equipping them with piercing and sharp eyed to make them even more powerful, as they're crucial for an upcoming achievement on Jewelry Store. The shotgun purchase also earned me the Would You Like a Receipt achievement, and simply for buying a weapon. Heading in, the plan was to take control of the store and go scorched earth on all the sieves in the vicinity to increase the likelihood of an escape. For those of you that don't know, escapes are a little complex mechanically, but for the most part each sieve you snuff out earns an extra 5% chance to the probability of one occurring, which is something we actually want for once. This isn't ideal, as we'll need a lot of spending cash on this run, but as we basically have no money to lose at this stage, the cleaner costs don't stink too much. I'm also going to have to be as diligent as possible with gauge packages for once, as there are a number of achievements attached to finding the different variants. After getting control of the store, I was quickly able to complete Diamonds of Forever for securing 4 bags without the escape car leaving, before forcing things loud to attempt the private party achievement. Courtesy of the wonderful Unknown Knight's many guides, it turns out that keeping the cops as the store is completely possible, even without actively participating to assist the AI. Sadly, I failed to actually follow his guide properly, securing 7 bags before going loud, which seems to up the speed and intensity of the initial police response waves. Meaning on mayhem difficulty, the cops were just a bit too much for the crew to fend off on the street, noticing that a taser had slipped inside as the achievement failed to pop as the van pulled in. Restarting before I could complete the heist and accidentally skip this achievement, my theory around the more intense first wave was seemingly proven on attempt 2. On the plus side, I managed to secure the I got it, I got it achievement for catching a bag mid-air, but once again, didn't have the firepower to keep the cops at bay. Going aloud immediately on attempt 3, this really is an easy one to confirm, with the achievement popping at 3 minutes before a dozer one-shot me, enabling me to once again secure most bags in stealth for a much easier loud escape with copious civilian blood on my hands. Completing the initial heist carried me all the way to level 26, unlocking Guilty of Crime and Smooth Criminal passively. It also led directly to an escape mission, all according to plan. Unfortunately, these escape achievements are far from simple, least of all for the park escape, which we rolled into first. Here you can grab the King of the Hill achievement for preventing any cops from setting foot inside the park itself. Solo, and this poorly equipped, there's no way you're going to be able to hold it down, so keeping your distance and hoping the spawns work out in your favour really is the only way, which sadly wasn't the case for me this time, clearing the heist with 8 bags, but without the achievement. I'll have more chances at this one later though, so for now we can move on to prepping for the bank heist. Despite all the innocent bloodshed, I still had a hefty payday to spend from the previous jewellery store, so I picked up a locomotive 12 gauge for a future challenge, and modified my hockey heat to earn the mass villain achievement. Sadly, there are quite a few achievements locked behind performing certain tasks whilst wearing specific cosmetics, which can only be earned via loot drop cards, so RNG will be playing quite a sizeable part in this challenge. I spent as much cash as possible here as I knew that I was about to burn through my reserves with another postal moment on the bank heist for a second roll of the escapes. Heading in, I hoped to get a little further in stealth than I did, but what mattered most was I'd already tied up the thugs for the John Wick achievement. Drilling into the vault on this heist is no issue at all, especially with an interior open gate, what it wasn't a fan of was moving the thugs from the car park all the way over to the escape van. Payday 3 might be the butt of a fair few jokes at the moment, but one thing it definitely got right was moving hostages. In Payday 2, it's about as much fun as watching paint dry, and the sieves are about as responsive as the strike team proved to be. God, I hope that joke ages poorly. 
They walk about two meters before needing to be sat down and stood up again to get the blood flowing in their legs to move another two meters. This got even worse when a SWAT van turret decided to park beside the escape van, making this operation even trickier. In the end, I got one of the two to the escape, but was on death's door myself, accidentally tripping on the evac zone and, for some unknown reason, earning the St. Francis achievement. But in my panic, as I was sure I'd messed something up, I alt f 4 Turns out, all was good, inexplicably, so we can happily run the bank guys back without having to play babysitter for the hostages. On this second attempt, I finally got myself cloaked for the holy shit achievement, and shortly after, got my revenge with a shotgun for the in town you're the law, in here it's me achievement, catching him in the startup frames of a leap. Once more, I rolled the park escape, and yet again, I wasn't able to defend the hill, although this time I'm genuinely unsure which cops made it inside as I really stuck to the outskirts. Ah oh well, on Mayhem, just a couple of bags are enough to earn the good haul achievement for securing loot bags valued at least 400,000, although this one only pops when the entire heist is complete. Go Bank next, probably the heist I was dreading the most in the early game. You guys know I normally do everything in my power to avoid having to do this RNG fest in stealth, but sadly stealth offers slightly more and, truth be told, slightly easier achievements as a solo player, so I put together a build and headed in. I have a bunch of side objectives I need to complete on this one, so after a highly unsuccessful first attempt in stealth, I made sure to head up to the roof on attempt 2 to pick up the upside down achievement for turning this into the robber's bank of savings and trust. Sadly, that was about all I was able to manage for the next few attempts at this one, as I was genuinely starting to consider whether it might be worth soft resetting until I rolled into the 1% open vault RNG rather than subject myself directly to the stealth mechanics. Wanting to at least succeed at something, I started going after dead presence independently, requiring me to place four body bags under the tree. Unfortunately, I was reminded the hard way on attempt 5 that as soon as things go loud, body bags are removed from the map, meaning there was no way for me to just rush my way to this achievement. Instead, what I needed was the body bag asset and ECM jammers, meaning I could grab a couple of bodies and move them close to the tree, before dropping the ECMs to hold the alarm at bay whilst I scrambled to grab the third and fourth unlucky presents under the tree for a much more fiddly than expected completion. Obviously, that broke stealth, meaning I had to reset for a proper go at those additional stealth-only achievements. On attempt 7, I had some genuinely wonderful luck, managing to dispatch of both patrolling guards and answer their pages without dropping an ECM. This meant I was perfectly set up to clear out the cams and start controlling the sieves for the stealth section. In a complete reversal of strategies, this time I needed to keep all the sieves on the map alive for the We Are All Professionals challenge. This made everything twice as hectic, and also meant I wasn't guaranteed to even find both required genset keycards, as I could only tie down 7 sieves thanks to a cable type drop. Fortunately, I found one card in the briefcase and the second on one of the first workers I tied down, meaning I got the time lock started almost immediately. The main strategy from here was just to keep running around and shouting at every passerby I spotted like a complete lunatic. Keeping most of them together in the main building made it easier to intimidate them as a group, but as the vault drew closer to opening, I was having to manage alerted sieves in just about every corner of the map. On the plus side, keeping sieves alive does seem to reduce the likelihood of a genset patrol being called in, meaning I was able to get inside the vault without needing to do any more killing. I was hugely lucky here, finding the money bundle at the very first deposit box I picked, but was still trapped inside the vault waiting for the lasers to move. Let me tell you, I don't think my pulse has ever gone higher from playing the Payday franchise before, as I was forced to drop my second ECM to prevent sieves from calling the cops, dithering inside the vault. Whilst I wasn't able to answer the phone, meaning trouble was on the way, that isn't an instant alarm, meaning I just about had the time, with pocket ECM still in the wings, to make it to the van and complete this entire heist in stealth as a complete pacifist, earning not only is everything okay, and we are all professionals, but also eco round for never using my primary weapon. My notes on this one speak for themselves. This was tough as hell, and I'm incredibly relieved to get it out of the way with the maximum achievements earned after only 7 attempts. Compared to Go Bank, Diamond Store is no big deal, being another heist that best rewards stealth in the early game. Although I did rack up another fail attempt because all the guards had congregated upstairs and holding each other's hands is an effective way of guarding a building in the Payday universe apparently, on run 2 my silence locomotive made short work of the security detail, starting to move the gems and once again keeping all the sieves in check. A few back and forth trips later and I'd secured all bags, unlocking going places for earning 1 million spendable cash and no heist for old men for grabbing the stealth completion with a silent killer equipped locomotive. Infuriatingly, I did actually fail my first potential achievement of this run as well though, with hostage situation, which simply requires you to not let any sieves escape the store or die. Honestly, I have no idea why I failed this one, as I didn't take a single life and it seems as if they were all still in places I escaped, even though they were alerted. 
this could just be a picky achievement without additional cable ties, but even so, I feel like I'm the one being robbed this time. Anyway, I did what any criminal would do in this situation and drown my sorrows by purchasing expensive fully automatic weaponry, earning the spend money to make money achievement in the process for spending my first million bucks. The transport heists are next, another chance and an escape, and the first heist that opens up the potential of really grinding out some weapon kills. With my recently purchased Clarion, I hung around and opened all lockboxes, searching for the train heist plans to no avail, but successfully completing the Tour de Clarion achievement for 200 kills with it. With all loot bags in tow, this one also dinged me to level 50, automatically unlocking Armed and Dangerous. Better still, it dropped me off on the Overpass Escape. Now, You Shall Not Pass is not an easy challenge to go for, but once again, Unknown Knight is my saviour, teaching me how to reset for the correct spawn and just hold down the bridge with sentries. Honestly, I thought this Skulldozer might have ruined it right at the end of the assault, but it seemed to not be the case as this one popped regardless as soon as Bile arrived. After that surprise completion, I bought my ninth weapon, the Gecko 762, unlocking fully loaded in the process. Transport Downtown was next, a great opportunity to pick up my missing transport heist achievements. After a few resets, I managed to get the but wait, there's more achievement for finding the blueprints, and then went back to farming up cloaker kills with the Gecko and seeking out the elusive gold loot I required for another challenge. After six painstaking resets, I finally found it, now just needing nine bags of bullion for the achievement. Sadly, not for the first time in this run, upon securing the last bag, I stepped in the wrong location, forgetting where the escape spawned in. This meant I immediately ended the heist, instead of getting the chance to secure the extra gold. Not only did this mean that I was three kills short of rabbit hunting, something I'm going to have to seek out on a later heist, I also missed If You Like It Then You Should Have Put A Ring On It, despite resetting multiple times specifically for the RNG to make it happen. This achievement is obviously not that hard, but it's painfully upsetting to miss out on just due to a slight lapse in memory. If you're following along at home, this is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of my misfortune and jump ahead of me in the achievement counters. I also didn't roll an escape, meaning another potential, if low probability, achievement missed. But for the first time in a challenge run, the transport train heist wasn't destined to be the most frustrating of the trifecta. My routing document suggested hybrid stealth for this one, but I could easily pick up some of the additional loud achievements in the future, so I went in fully intending to ghost the entire thing. After milling my way through all four pages and moving the first 15 bags of ammo, my escapades were spotted, but with 16 already secured before the alarm rang, I was able to load up the gang and run to the escape before snipers started spawning in, earning the let them watch achievement for not killing any snipers on this heist which, rather amusingly, can also be earned in stealth, as well as we're going to need a bigger boat, simply for securing all 20 ammo bags, which is a necessity on higher difficulties anyway. The most noteworthy occurrence here was that I unlocked Frank during the card flip, one of the many RNG masks I needed for an achievement. Now I just need to get Taze 25 times whilst wearing it, which is easier said than done, now that it seems that Tasers have been nerfed into the ground to resemble their Payday 3 counterparts after update 240.3. Anyway, next up it's more Crasher, and yet another tedious achievement that those sadists at Overkill at the time must have loved coming up with. Shoot the Glass requires you to destroy all windows in the entire mall, including the many tiny planes that line the entrance. In truth, it wasn't that hard, but I was worried one had glitched about halfway through the heist. Fortunately, the GL40 did a lot of the heavy lifting, incidentally destroying everything in its path, whilst I also unlocked Big Badder Boom for landing a GL40 quad kill, whilst I shot the final elusive panel out with the Signature 40. I hung around on this heist for upwards of 15 minutes aiming for long range grenade launcher kills to go towards artillery barrage, but I eventually realised this wasn't the heist to farm it out on, switching it up to earn above the law for 100 sig 40 kills, a satisfying if lengthier than usual more crash a clear. Four stores is up next and once again I was expecting a bit of a grind fest searching for a gold bar in one of the safes. Turns out that wasn't the case at all as I struck gold on just the second safe I blasted open, unlocking yeah he's a gold digger and quitting out to change up my bill for a few extra completions. On run 2 I once again found a gold bar almost immediately so clearly this wasn't the devious RNG role I initially thought it was. That meant I was basically ready to leave, except first I need to pick up some Tatonka and 8k kills. With a fairly complete hacker perk deck at this point this was no big deal, holding the cops in place whilst I earned the collector for picking up 100 AK or car family kills. Automatically upon entering the van to escape, I also grabbed Russian Arsenal for clearing the heist with a full set of Gage's finest Russian weapons. Again, no civilians were spared on this heist, and for once that paid off, bringing us onto the cafe escape, where I could not only farm out a few more GL40 kills from over 25 meters, but also earn the cappuccino to go please achievement almost automatically for escaping within 30 seconds of the van arriving, which is hardly a challenge without any bags to secure. From here, the grind fest continues with White Xmas, regularly a complete gimme of a heist, but for one day only it's my theoretical worst nightmare. 
You see, impossible, it can't be, is it? It's an achievement that requires you to find and secure Almir's Toast, a unique form of loot that can spawn in the packages on this heist. Each package has a 1% chance of producing Almir's Sacred Bread, so I'm about to feel like a goddamn shiny hunter in Pokemon for the first time in my life. Hell, those are the same odds of unboxing an unusual in TF2 and let me tell you, about 400 keys later I've still never seen those sacred words appear on my monitor. Yeah, there's no way, this one's gonna take… oh, that was the fifth box I opened. Well, what the hell, there goes my luck for the entire year. Well, unfortunately, that isn't the achievement complete as I actually have to secure the thing to proceed. But on the plus side, I have a lot to get busy with on this one, aiming for a few zipline and R93 specific challenges. Shortly after shipping Harudin back off to the Balkans, I landed a zipline headshot with the R93 to unlock Last Action Villain, and a few painful assault waves later, as I repeatedly failed to actually load the toast into the escape, so slow was my movement speed whilst holding onto it, I landed my 10th shield kill for maximum penetration, and Lord of the Flies was unlocked just a minute later as I hit my 50th sniper headshot kill. After over 20 minutes of struggle with the world's heaviest bread, I actually managed to toss it aboard the chopper to complete the 1% challenge and finally allow me to reset the heist to go for other achievements. I don't know what I would have done if I had got into custody after finding the bloody thing, but to be honest, I'm just glad that we never have to find out. On run 2 I prioritised what's in the box, unlocked for opening 40 presents on overkill. At the time I actually thought you needed to secure 40 bags of coke, but that was probably a good thing as it meant I grounded out even more cash and XP on this heist. In the process of box hunting, I obtained Didn't See That Coming Did You for 10 zipline kills with the sniper, Arachne's Curse for 100 sniper headshots, Fugu Fighter for poisoning 3 enemies at once with my shuriken, and Gift Giver for 75 kills with non-explosive throwables. Honestly, the tracking utility is such a godsend on this run, I really should have been using it from the start. I'm also slowly working on For All You Legends by using an infiltrator build with everyone's favourite spoon melee, but that's still a work in progress. Anyway, it only took about 16 minutes to open 40 presents, meaning I could escape when the chopper arrived once more, securing a massive 22 bags in the process for a solid cash and XP injection. After spending quite a while on the last heist, even in an achievement run, Ukrainian job is nothing more than a passing visit. Using it as an opportunity to get started on trench knife kills in stealth, whilst also completing my first Gage Courier DLC achievement after finding my fifth Green Mantis stamp. I also easily cleared the only exclusive achievement available on Mayhem, I'm sure no one heard that, by waiting out the drills to grab the tiara before intentionally setting off the metal detectors to complete the heist in stealth even after triggering the alarms. The huge challenge that can't be underestimated in this run though is the sheer amount of inventory management and reshuffling that's required before each heist. Prior to Meltdown it was a case of prepping for some big shotgun achievements. After customising a Flechette Judge in Buckshot VD12, I was ready to head to the Shadow Raid warehouse to get down to business. Within the first minutes of the heist I'd already earned 711 for picking up 7 headshot kills in 11 seconds with the VD12 on the murky water lemmings who love to wander directly into your bullets at the start of the heist. Shortly after I earned Pink Slip just for jumping in the back of a forklift truck where I chained together 10 kills for a very simple drive-by completion. It also wasn't long before I dealt with 10 dozers with Buckshot for the bang for the buck achievement, and this heist is also ideal for picking up flechette shotgun kills on snipers as we found out during my recent scout challenge run, grabbing the 10th kill at around the halfway point of this attempt. Striving for there was a car, I was also hellbent on not using the Longfellow for this one, stacking up the warheads on the forklift truck and instead pushing them along the old fashioned way. My bill wasn't really set up for dealing with SWAT turrets, so this was a lesson in patience and a reminder of just how crucial the crew AI are to this run as they hard carried me with revives along the way. It was scrappy, but eventually I was able to load up all eight on the train, and bearing in mind this was a high kill heist and I actually had decent trigger discipline for once, I was actually eligible for Shotguns 101, unlocked by completing a heist with upwards of 50 kills and over 101% accuracy, so there was no way I was hanging around to miss any more shots. Now, this is where I have to mention that there was one final achievement that is theoretically obtainable here, but trying to grab it whilst also going for many of the others I targeted sounds so sanity breaking I decided against it. They don't pay as enough, requires you to secure all additional loot, which is miserable at the best of times, but even worse when avoiding the Longfellow. Based on the wording of this one, it might be possible to secure all loot the usual way and then restart the heist for other achievements, but I failed to do that, so this might be another potential achievement dropped that you guys can pick up at home. Once more, I celebrated this completion with a few more offshore paydays, fishing for achievement associated mass, actually securing the 44th and the Pumpkin King for future runs. Strangely, just equipping the Interceptor 45 is good enough for the Christmas Came Early achievement, which isn't a waste of cash as this weapon is also required for a kill challenge. 
Aftershock is next, a famously sprawling heist that's ideal for picking up achievements such as Artillery Barrage, hitting my final long-range GL40 kills by spamming it down this bridge. Immediately I reset to seek out the civilian with the knife for the 400 bucks achievement. He was easily located on run 2, so I was free to use the rest of this wide open heist to farm up weapon kills. First completing rabbit hunting for cloaker kills with the gecko after my early attempt on armoured transport was clumsily shut down, and then eventually after abusing the concentrated spawns of the endless assault at the escape, I grabbed my 666th interceptor 45 kill for the pumpkin king made me do it achievement. Some of these high kill challenges really do drag heists out, but it's good to take the opportunity to make progress when you're already in deep on a relatively lengthy one. Hacker also helps by basically turning the killing process into simple target practice. Nightclub is another one of those heists that has a ton of associated achievements that require resets to complete. On run 1 I went in with a simple infiltrator setup to pick up every day I'm shoveling for 25 Klaus shovel kills, whilst on run 2 I had a couple of priorities. First, I need to grab 50 fist kills for the 8th and final rule. This was just a matter of time to complete, however keep the party going is a little more complex, needing me to trawl the DJ across most of the heist over to the escape van, which is only accessible after clearing all this heist objectives and setting up the escape. I'm fairly certain he was being forced to sit every time he wandered into my jokers, which was far from ideal, making this slow march to the van absolutely painstaking, but eventually he managed the journey after a 20 minute snorefest that isn't even the end of this miserable heist. Yep, sadly I need to reset once more to seek out extra potential achievements, the key one being Hey Mr DJ requiring 12 hostages on the dance floor during the escape, something I couldn't reliably achieve whilst also escorting the DJ himself. The problem was I was also forced to bring a pair of saws for another potential achievement, meaning I couldn't pick up ammo boxes and therefore only had 6 cable ties to go around. Even so, I'm fairly certain I started this house with enough sieves on the dance floor and controlled them well with the AI for the most part, but as the bodies began to pile up it became pretty tough to track. Once I'd opened up the cash safe I chucked a bag on the poker table for going all in and after another short wait was free to rush for the escape, hoping to make it out before the sieves decided to move. Sadly this wasn't enough for the achievement, I have no idea if this is because they weren't all cable tied or if I just lost a few on the way out, but this was a bummer after trying so hard to unlock it. On the plus side I did manage oversource 72,000 for going akimbo on the saws, as well as hip stuff obviously not ADSing during the entire heist. Sadly swing dancing didn't unlock for 50 melee kills in a heist, although you can clearly see it was completed, I'm hopeful it'll pop at a later stage in the run anyway though. Prepping for the next heist, I grabbed the Gavir, my 18th own gun for the weapon collector achievement. Heading in, Stealing Xmas is another of those heists that has a few achievements that are worth splitting across separate attempts. Run 1 was all about farming up dozer kills and grabbing the paycheck gang mass for the imitations achievement. I also secured all loot on this one for the Grinch achievement, which was a fairly easy prospect thanks to the shape charges in my inventory. The reason why I had to tick all these boxes before restarting was the Christmas party achievement, which requires me to keep 10 sieves under the tree for the escape, which is easier said than done without my full attention. Attempt 2 after the restart proved this, as I was unable to run back and forth quickly enough to keep my supply of sieves intimidated, and after accidentally clipping a few decided it might just be easy to restart at this point. Run 3 went a little better as I'd finally realised I didn't need to get all 10 from the initial sieve spawns, as there are more to be found later in the map. Instead I just gathered as many as possible close to the tree, which was once again a lesson in patience and extreme frustration as I picked up the last couple of the 25 total dozer kills I needed with the Gavir for precision aiming. After opening up the jewellery store I was confident I had enough civilians within the radius of the tree as I waited for Bile to return with the hooks, counting at least 12 within the ring as we fortunately did earn Christmas party on the escape. Much to my relief as I think any more civilian wrangling on this one might have broken my will to keep going with the challenge. Watch Dogs is up next, which for once might not be a walk in the park as I'm forced to do this one almost in the nude thanks to we are rockstars on this job. Rocking no skills, an Amcar and Shimano doesn't sound ideal, especially when we need to secure at least 12 bags on day 1 for a day 2 achievement. Luckily I did have the AI to hard carry on this one, all equipped with gauge assault pat mass for another special achievement. Day 1 was sloppy, needing to really rely on my doctor's bags at opportune moments to keep things moving, although at least I still had access to Hacker for a bit of healing and crucial crowd control. In the end I managed to secure all bags and head into day 2 via the armoured car for the coming in hot achievement. Day 2 was less of a scramble as this heist really plays itself, grabbing fish AI for chucking a loot bag in the drink early on, and just holding out beside the warehouse for most of this one as out of balance is guaranteed on higher difficulties with the warehouse being literally shut down so long as you have 12 bags to secure. Reaching the escape covered by Hacker, I was also presented with We Are Rockstars on this job and Unusual Suspects for following those pre-heist stipulations I mentioned. 
Firestarter has some fairly complex achievements to seek out, so this one requires a little more brain power to stay on top of everything. Day 1 wasn't so bad as all I had to do was go after an all loot run, with the deagle in hand for as much pistol firepower as I could muster. Cray I make everything much easier, so I earned Lord of War after under 8 minutes. Day 2 is where the fun, or agony depending on how you look at it begins. I intend to clear Guessing Game, a pure RNG achievement that requires you to cut the right wires to unlock the server without hacking the PC. Unfortunately, it also needs you to complete the entire heist in stealth, which I didn't initially realise as I went for a fast and loose ECM rush style of play. Rolling the RNG I required after only 9 prior failures, getting into the server room but not having an ECM remaining to get the interior door open or time necessary to complete this one before the alarm went off. A few runs later I just tried to secure the goat, for you can run but not hide, forgetting that I needed access to the servers to even get the guy in the boot, another massive waste of time. 16 runs after the first positive RNG, I managed it again, but this time I panicked on the run over to the server room, getting caught out and not having enough pager juggling dexterity to save the attempt. Fortunately the RNG gods were merciful in granting me another bit of luck with the wire cutting objective back to back, actually securing the two servers this time and a nervous romp through the FBI officers before having to head back in and drill access to the bloody goat who I hadn't actually forgotten about. In total this took 26 admittedly brief attempts before the stars aligned to unlock both guessing game and you can run but not hide, finally freeing me from day 2 of Firestarter. In the process I also picked up my 15th red spider gauge package for a nice bonus achievement for my troubles. Stealth on day 3 was comparatively a breeze without any RNG to keep me honest, as I endured a short lot picking session to find the hockey poster that was nothing compared to the tedium resetting for guessing game. After finding it to unlock the first time, I immediately cleared off to finish the heist and also unlock for Daisy, in the process digging level 75 for career criminal. Oh and I also picked up the only one that is true in the process, somewhat by accident, for finding the hidden bullet trophy for a fifth time, predominantly due to prior restarts. I didn't really consider these achievements, so this one was an accident. Last of Hector's jobs is Rats, another major farming heist, this time geared towards snipers. Thanks to the pocket ECM making everyone stand still, I was easily able to hit a triple collateral with the Thanatos, and a few minutes later I headed outside to land a satisfying 40 meter sniper takedown with the Compact 40. The Thanatos is just a beast when it comes to dealing with dozers, so it wasn't long into this run that I picked up my 10th kill to grab another sniper achievement with relative ease, and Black Knight for a Monty Python themed Claymore takedown just a couple of minutes later. The Claymore also came in handy, for their armour is thick and their shields broad, requiring 10 shield kills with a chivalry pack melee weapon. Picking up the final achievement of the run for a 10th cloaker headshot with the Thanatos is pretty much the last action of a 30 minute heist, restarting one of the most fruitful runs in terms of achievements per minute without actually managing the clear. Run 2 on the other hand ended after only 5 minutes when I was sent into custody early on. This didn't derail much though as I was still making progress towards my rattlesnake achievements, landing my 250th headshot early into run 3 for pest control as well as a 30th counter sniper kill to unlock nothing personal. With the Rattlesnake being my primary focus, it wasn't long before I'd landed my 250th kill for Public Enemy Number 1, and I'd actually dropped Graze for this hunt to make landing true collaterals easier, which did pay off after around 25 minutes of trying to line up double kills as I hit my 25th true shot. Seer of Death was quick to follow for my 500th sniper headshot, although this time I wasn't only going for kills, actually cooking 7 bags of meth for the grindy full measure achievement. Hanging around just a little longer to pick up my final required rattlesnake kill on the sniper to unlock Return to Sender. Finally believing I'd done enough, slamming out over an hour of gameplay without a clear to show for it, I decided to flee the heist, suddenly realising my mistake as in the madness of farming up all these sniper achievements, I just straight up overlooked I am the one who knocks. Of course keeping the SWATs out of the math lab solo isn't the easiest, but I'm also positive I could have managed it with the help of Unknown Knights tutorials, but being honest it just slipped my mind and there was no going back now. To make matters worse we rolled the garage escape immediately, which sucks as they see me bagging they hate in, requires you to escape quickly with 8 bags which is only possible if the escape comes on day 2 instead of day 1 where 7 is the most bags you can feasibly hold. I was able to clear the heist without too many issues, but it is worth mentioning this is my final chance at any escape in the run, so that means quite a few RNG achievements are also officially failed as a result. Moving the focus back to Rats Day 2, I slipped up here by accidentally picking up a bag of meth after already placing it, angering the Cobras and forcing an early restart. No worries though, as I planned on dealing with these guys violently anyway, blowing a few of them sky high with dynamite to earn my Nobel Prize. Stupidly I messed up again here, not realising Caribbean Pirate required me to actually steal back my cash reward, not just take back my own meth, missing another achievement opportunity as a result of my inability to read. 
Not ideal, but day 3 is at least full of more squishy hostiles, making it easy for me to run through 6 in a row in under 6 seconds with the Peacemaker for the fastest gun in the West achievement, capping off this heist with a final Thanatos challenge, earning far far away for grabbing 25 40 meter plus sniper kills, which is easy to do firing across the entire bridge. Finishing Hector's final job and of course earning his difficulty completion achievements in addition to the standard highest completion ones, alongside 4 monkeys for doing so with the gauge shotgun pack monkey mass equipped on my crewmates. We don't get much of a reprieve here though, as we now move into the elephant's jobs, starting with Big Oil. Once again, this is a heist that's best approached in segments to ensure a clean completion. First, I went for a junkyard full of junkies, comfortably killing all bikers on the map within one minute of the heist starting, resetting for run 2, where I went for a slightly more understated stealth approach, despite immediately electrocuting myself on the fence. This enabled me to eventually pick up the bonus assets for day 2 without anything burning, after switching over to the saw and ammo bag to open up the ATMs in the basement for I knew what I did was wrong. The final day 1 achievement is just housekeeping, and for ending the day in stealth. Now, those of you expecting me to go for Dr. Miserable on day 2, testing all fusion engines for the best part of an hour, will be disappointed as this achievement is only earned upon highest completion, meaning I can only earn one of the two Doctor themed achievements and I'd much rather go for the fantastic variant as I actually value my time and need to get this video up by the end of the year. Don't worry though, we still have to jump through some hoops on this one, first needing to stealth up to Bile's arrival, meaning attempt 1 is a hard reset, as is attempt 2 after this security guard phased through a wall. Attempt 3 went much more smoothly as I used the keycard earned on day 1 to open up the server room, found the engine specs and just had to wait out the hack before loading the correct server into the chopper after Bile set off the alarm, earning the damn it Bile achievement. During the downtime, whilst the server was in transit, I set about farming for some more weapon challenges, first earning Inception for my 100th Eagle Heavy kill, then Spray Control for 32 consecutive Tatonka kills without reloading, also unlocking Have a Nice Day for 300 gauge Russian weapon kills in the process, landing the final kill with only 7 rounds remaining. After years of doing this, of course I got the engine right first time around for Dr. Fantastic, and also secured my 25th Purple Snake package and 10th Yellow Bull for both associated gauge career achievements. The even more crucial result of this heist though was that I hit level 80 from it, carried predominantly by all the extra loot XP that we normally ignore on true challenge runs. This means we're at Deathwish difficulty already, as of framing frame, allowing me to earn an extra achievement for every future completion. It does also make earning specifically challenging achievements a little trickier, as I'm sure we'll soon find out. The art gallery portion of this multi-day heist really isn't that bad, although I did have to complete it using no skills, in a suit with the platypus sniper and the judge, to have a chance that we do it live, which wasn't ideal on the concealment front. Ah oh well, the entire purpose of run 1 was to run in, steal a painting and chuck it down the toilet, so nothing crazy required here to unlock Van Gogh to hell. I also decided this was the perfect stealth heist to farm up some stealth specific kills on. With the Venomorph mask equipped after unlocking it on my last offshore payday spending spree, I just had to get 50 stealth melee kills using the trench knife to earn a second achievement at the same time. After just a couple of runs, culling the gallery population, I grabbed Special Operation Execution, although for some reason this was only tracked on Steam's end, not in game, which will be a problem later on. A little more bloodshed later and no one can hear you scream was also easily earned, meaning I was now free to stealth kill how I wanted. Useful as I baited two guards into the toilets with the hand dryer for the wolf lures you to your grave on the sixth run of the heist. Sadly, I didn't quite have the skills to go through the rest of this one undetected, actually using up all my pages and eventually failing when my paintings were spotted by the spawning guard. Run 7 was surprisingly successful despite holding a detection risk up in the 50s as I successfully moved the paintings up to the open window in Hall A, securing all 9 with only two guards getting the chop as I earned painting yourself into a corner for the all loot stealth clear. Day 2 just requires you to trade those paintings for a big deal, earning another freebie after my hard work on day 1, although day 3 is where things get really tricky. There are two polar opposite achievements I can go for, one requiring stealth and the other loud. I wasn't even there simply requires you to move all loot via the zipline in this one, meaning you can feasibly restart to earn Afraid of the Dark straight after. But with the consistent limitation of We Do It Live limiting my loadout, honestly neither seemed like much fun or even that feasible. In the end, after failing stealth twice early on and then getting nowhere in loud, I decided to pour all of my focus into earning just one of these two, going for a fully loud holdout with my crew AI equipped with the still busted Akron LMG as decimal points are hard. With their extreme firepower, there was a slim chance they could hold Deathwish cops off from the three power boxes, but honestly, with how hellbent the cops are when it comes to seeking these things out, I was doubtful. For three glorious minutes, the gang held out, keeping the cops at bay whilst I just hid out in the server room with ECMs for crowd control. But in the end, Joy went down and Bodhi failed to stick to task, resulting in the power going down for the first time. 
And sadly, this wasn't just bad luck as it went down three additional times in the three minutes that followed, indicating that restarting probably wasn't worth it for the 1 in 100 chance of the uncontrollable Crow AI pulling this one off. So I headed for the escape as soon as it was available, skipping out on the possibility of earning I wasn't even there and afraid of the dark in exchange for We Do It Live. I do actually wonder if with more specialised builds, especially with sentries, I could have picked up both in exchange, but I went for the high roll, aiming for all three, and ended up holding just the one. Maybe you guys can do better yourselves. A bit dejected, this was at least our first Deathwish completion, and under pretty trying circumstances, making it through the heist itself wasn't too hard, although I won't be running Akron AI on all heists, as they'll just steal my necessary weapon kills if I do. Election day is a nice change of pace though, with stealth being the way to go on this one. After a couple of sloppy attempts, I managed to secure Hot Lava 2.0 for parkouring my way over to the computer on day one without touching the floor, before resetting until I was certain I could tag the correct truck in under a minute, doing so with ECMs and not jumping in order to also earn I never asked for this. For tagging the right truck I earned Master Detective, and for doing so in under a minute I was given Speedlock Holmes. Day 2 was a little trickier as I failed stealth multiple times in the warehouse, trying to force open all the storage units for bonus loot, not taking anywhere near enough care after the recent silent store bug fixes. There really are no major tricks to this one, you just need to secure all bonus cash for Storage Hunter, which I managed on run 4, and keep things completely quiet up the escape for I'm a Swinger. Moving away from the elephant for now, the dentist keeps things interesting with Big Bank. This is a tricky one to root because feasibly, you can try this in loud all stealth and earn the same number of high specific achievements. When this is the case though, I generally prefer to go loud as it opens up the possibility for grinding out some free weapon challenges simultaneously. But first, we just had to use all 10 favours on this heist to unlock you owe me one. Now, once more, I'm faced with a nasty RNG achievement and it takes two to tango. Solo this is a pain, as you need to guess the correct PC to hack first time, or just get lucky with no firewall popping, both being low percentage occurrences. Annoyingly this requires resetting until it pops, but I'm starting to wonder if this run has been blessed at some point as on the very first attempt at this, boom, first PC and a new mass for my troubles. That out the way early, it was time for the LMGs to get their time in the sun, as just a couple of minutes in I earned bullet hell for 10 kills in 10 seconds with the almighty buzzsaw. Shortly after, I picked up Cloak and Dagger for a simple knife takedown of a cloaker, and then killings as easy as breathing for 10 kills in a row with an LMG without letting go of the trigger. After failing to kill anyone with Floyd the Pig, I knew I'd have to reset this run, but still tried to bring Bobblehead Bob to the vault, finding out in the process that you need to get the thing open first. I was sniped at the crane with no allies to save me on attempt 2, but actually made it count on attempt 3, with Floyd doing quite the number on the cops, attempting to save my well-placed hostages below. Unlocking it takes a pig to kill a pig. I managed to keep Bobblehead Bob in check for the entire drilling process this time, opening up the vault and bringing him inside to mimic the iconic trailer, and earning backing Bobblehead Bob in the process. I held out on this one for quite some time to earn They Drew First Blood Not Me for 220 LMG kills in a single day, and Human Sentry Gun for managing 20 LMG kills without undeploying the bipod, a bit of a lesson in holding choke points and patience. Sadly, as cautious as I was in securing the loot on this heist, I just missed out on earning Matrix with lasers as I couldn't keep the AI at arm's length while securing bags, and in the end Sokol went rogue, despite being equipped with a stakeout with its tragic range, he was able to take down a sniper. This one is very doable, but tough when the AI in Payday 2 is so finicky, and like hell was I moving 16 bags solo for Sweet 16. Before heading into Hotline Miami, I earned Man of Iron in the menus for simply unlocking and equipping the ICTV. Hotline Miami is comparatively straightforward, with far fewer high specific achievements. First, I just needed 30 baseball bat melee kills on thugs for do you like hurting other people, which would have probably been easier to go after on day 2, but wasn't too difficult to achieve at the motel after a few resets. Whilst running Infiltrator for the melee kills, I was also able to land a Javelin right to a Cloaker's Dome for the Skewer achievement. Less simple was earning Overdose, which requires you to cook 6 bags of meth in the lab hidden on this heist. It sounds easy enough, but there's an RNG element to this one I completely forgot about, going about my business normally and earning Ducking Awesome for a triple headshot kill with Donald's Horizontal Leveler equipped. After cooking 5 batches, my lack of research struck as I was all out of components and still a bag short. 
Admittedly, this wasn't a complete waste of time though, as I was farming up the whopping 1000 VD12 kills I needed in the process, and this thing is at least fun as hell. But once more, the legend Unknown Knight comes in clutch, with his guide on fixing the RNG by opening the crates in a specific pattern to force six batches worth of ingredients to spawn on the heist. With that revelation, I was free to cook and interrupted, securing six bags after about 27 minutes. But that was only half the battle, as with this heist high spawn rate and concentrated spawns, I decided to also finish up farming for the VD-12, hitting the big 1k and unlocking a heister with a shotgun after another 15 minutes on the heist, escaping as soon as I could after it popped up. Day 2 was a lot less grindy, first completing few for saving the guy rigged to blow on the way up to the Commissar, and then walk faster for reaching the penthouse entrance in under 210 seconds. This day turned out to be the perfect opportunity to farm up death from below, earning 25 Nagant kills on SWATs whilst they repelled, which was a tricky nut to crack on the sniper run, also picking up the much simpler Hardcore for 100 Spec Ops SMG kills whilst farming regular SWATs on this heist, escaping once again with ease once the achievements were out of the way. Time now for a few more menu achievements, your favourite section of the video. I'm a healer tank damage dealer is about as simple as it comes, just requiring you to input 10 skill points in each tree. Army of One can be grabbed by equipping the GL40, Locomotive and ICTV, all of which I already owned, whilst point and shoot is earned by modding a pistol with the red dot sight and flash hider. I'll need one for later in the run, so also took the time out to purchase and mod the car 4 for the high speed low drag achievement, and after completing those gauge historical achievements earlier, I can now mod my broomstick with the damper L44 and sight L44 for so uncivilized. Finally, I grabbed a gold AK to prep for tabula rasa coming up on Hoxton Breakout. Annoyingly though, we're locked out of the Winds of Change achievement for completing the breakout with the whole crew wearing historical masks, as the Red Bear is incorrectly locked for me despite completing its requisite achievement earlier and having access to some of its completion rewards in my inventory. I guess this has something to do with the mod resetting my achievement progress, but it still sucks to miss out on such a free win at this point. Onwards and upwards though, as Hoxton Breakout is still a treasure trove of a heist. First up I want to farm some achievements I missed earlier in the run, starting with Shock and Orf, landing one HE round from a shotgun on four separate enemies. That one didn't take long, so I quickly moved on to I Ain't Got Time to Bleed, an achievement I've been working on since Big Bank, requiring me to get 15 knife kills whilst below 25% health. It was a bit finicky with all my regen from Hacker and Hostage Taker, but this one was inevitable. Next up, we have You Can't Hide for 25 R93 kills through a wall. The linear roadside section of Hoxton Breakout is absolutely ideal for this one, so it was done in record time. Knock Knock for 50 shield kills with a slug round shotgun took a little longer, but was easy enough to farm up in the background, whilst I also went for 378 group of Kurs kills to finish up what I started on Hotline Miami and complete license to kill. In all, it was about a 30 minute grind for quite a few solid completions. Now, for the real show, as Hoxton Breakout is of course the Tabula Rasa Heist. This requires us to go in suits only with no skills and a combination of the Golden AK and Chicago Typewriter. This was once a major challenge, before the dawn of Pert Dex and ultra powerful crew AI, but even now it's a bit annoying while striving for additional completions alongside it. I took a few tumbles on day one and absolutely needed the leeway my single medit bag offered to make it through the heist, with the aid of my highly overpowered crewmates. Unfortunately, they're so strong they even steal my Skulldozer kills for another achievement I'm working on. In any case, I'm happy they can carry as day two actually required us to hold the power switch without any slip ups this time. I'm also not allowed to use any key cards and need to pick up 200 kills on my own with my recon site modded AK for the reckoning. I did go down to my last down at the archives objective, but other than that, this one was never really in any doubt, as the crew made short work of any cops that went within 10 yards of the power box. I was forced to hang around and pick up a few more recon site kills, but this worked in my favour really, as I managed to get tased for the 25th time whilst wearing the Frank mask for It's Alive, It's Alive, meaning I don't need to stand in front of these guys willing them to zap me anymore, which is nice. I also found a 20th Blue Eagle package right at the escape, earning the final gauge career related achievements in the process, including there and back again. Of course, for completing the heist without using keycards or letting the power go out, I also unlocked Situation Normal and watched the power switch alongside Tabula Rasa as planned, which if my math serves me correctly, dings me to 300 achievements completed, roughly halfway to my lofty goal. Now, in case the runtime wasn't a dead giveaway, this is going to be a multi-part challenge. I hope you'll forgive me for leaving it on this cliffhanger, but the recording and editing process has taken much longer for this challenge just due to the nature of it and this new format. 
I've been relatively lucky with RNG so far, but if I wasn't, an objective as simple as seeking out Almir's Toast, which is entirely RNG dependent, could feasibly take hours alone to complete. So purely from a progress perspective, this one has to be split up. I can confirm the run is still in the balance too, uncompleted as it stands. So more than ever, I implore you, if you enjoyed this video, take the time out to hit the like button and let me know. It's a crazy format and just taking the time out to complete it is a huge opportunity cost for me as someone with a full-time job. Regardless, it's been fun and I'm looking forward to releasing part two as quickly as possible. Take care, good luck if you fancy trying this at home and I'll see you all very soon. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.